Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about stiction on your 6 liter power stroke. Uh, that is where your spool valve doesn't move as freely as it should due to uh, varnish and um, oil contaminants building up on that spool valve. Uh, normally it's seen uh, on first startup, you'll have uh, some uh, erratic idle, rough running, low power, and uh, when you uh, let it warm up, uh, typically goes away or it uh, s significantly lessens. Um, you can try oil additives like Revex. I've heard some good things about that. But uh, if you want to clean up your spool valve, uh, watch this video. I'm going to be uh, taking the spool valve out of this 6 liter injector and uh, sanding it and then uh, this should be stiction free. Alright, so you'll need a few tools. Uh, if you just want to clean up the spool valve, you'll need a T10. I don't know if that'll, that'll focus, probably not. But uh, a T10 Torx bit, a uh, four mil socket, and uh, this bit right here is a T15 Torx bit. You don't need that if uh, you don't want to take off the spool valve housing. Uh, you got two bolts there holding the spool valve housing on. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, when I cleaned up my eight injectors, I did take out the plunger underneath the spool valve housing and clean it up a little bit. Um, truck runs great now, so uh, since you have the injectors out, you can replace them if you like, but uh, if not, probably won't, uh, won't hurt you. Okay, so first step is to take off this bolt and nut right here. They hold the coil, uh, the two coils, on the injector. So you'll take your four mil, loosen the nut, that's kind of snug there. Um, and then I found that you can uh, hold the nut with your finger and then just twist it out with the Torx bit. So I'm gonna do that right now. Oh, not quite. Cool, so nuts off. This little nut, don't lose that. And this bolt right here has a stack of washers. You don't want to lose that either. And you can see the stack of washers at the end there. So set that aside. And uh, the way I like to do it is uh, I consider this slope side, the front, because when you take the coils off, this is the open disconnected part, so it's kind of like opening a book. So this is the front with the slope. This with the flat side, I consider the back. So you pop your coil off, you just lift on this plastic tab right here. And coil comes off, kind of like some ear uh, earmuffs. You want to kind of take a look at your coils and make sure they're not burnt you have them out. Uh, burnt coils can definitely cause injector issues. So take a look at that, make sure there's no uh, damage there. And uh, have my injector with the front up. And this is the spool valve right here. So this one actually has pretty much no stiction. It's moving very freely. The uh, other eight injectors that are currently in my truck right now uh, all moved freely as well. I don't know if the previous owner maintained it with oil changes or if it was the uh, Revex that I ran last oil change, but uh, all my spool valves were pretty good. Perhaps if you keep up on regular oil changes, uh, your spool valves will be in pretty good shape. Uh, when you take the spool valve out with the front side facing you, Pull it out, and you'll notice that one side is wider, longer, than the other side. You want to definitely make sure you put that back in the right way, or you'll have a high pressure oil leak. And um, I've never put it back in the wrong way, so I don't know if you'd have a no start, or a hot no start, or a, just an injector misfire. But uh, you definitely want to put that back in the correct way. Now at this point you can just sand your spool valve and uh, put it back together and you'll be good to go. But uh, since I have the injector out, 
I always like to take a look at the plunger underneath the spool valve housing just to make sure everything's moving freely down there, uh, which it should because the high pressure oil comes in through there, through the spool valve, and uh, the plunger underneath is being actuated by high pressure oil. So chances of anything getting gummed up down there are pretty slim, but uh, it's good to check. So take off the Torx bits here. They'll be pretty snug, but not uh, overwhelmingly tight. And I like to, to run one side out, set that aside. And uh, depending on how long it's been since this has last been taken apart, when you undo the other screw, it'll pop out or it'll stay stuck in there if it's been a while. So I put my finger there, twist out this bolt, and pull that apart. Yep, there we go. This uh, spacer washer here does not have an orientation as far as I know. So set that aside. Um, underneath is your plunger pieces. I don't know the exact name for it. Pull that out. There's the plunger, spring. Um, and this is the piece that I am here to look at. I'm not quite sure what this coating is, but it seems like it's pretty low friction. Um, I've tried sanding it with 600 grit and there's no scratches on it, so it must be something pretty hard and uh, robust. But if there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of um, build up here, you can give it a quick sand with the 600 grit or maybe 1000 grit if you'd like. Uh, I did that on all eight of my injectors in my truck and um, they, they're running perfectly. So this one's in pretty good shape. I'll just reassemble it, put it all back together. So that collar goes on your plunger spring. Set that down in there. And your spacer. And uh, the way you orient this is important. There's your injector hold down. You want that, um, if, if you have your orientation, the front like that. So you'd want the injector hold down to kind of be on this back corner. Uh, but while you have the spool valve housing out, you can take a look at that O-ring right there, make sure it's still good, which this one is. So you put that on there. And you'll need to press a little bit to get it down to where the threads can get started. So once you get the thread started, just uh, draw it down evenly, one side, then the other side. All right, that's drawn down. And uh, like I said, if you, if, if you consider this the front, you'll want your injector hold down point to be right there on the kind of the back. So those are run down. Take your ratchet and snug it down. It doesn't have to be super, super tight, but uh, pretty tight. So your injector spool valve housing is back on in the correct orientation. So over to the spool valve. Uh, so this one is in really good shape. It's not discolored at all. Um, in some instances, oh, it doesn't want to focus. Um, in some instances, this will have a golden-ish color, like um, brown, 
golden oil. And you'll want to sand through that until it's pretty much just a metal finish showing. Some people say they like 600 grit, some people say, say they like 1000 grit. Uh, from what I've read, these spool valves are pretty hard, so it'll take, a, take quite a bit to actually scratch it, so I think 600 is fine. Just want to wrap that around there, turn it a few times. Flip it over, turn it a few times. And it's looking pretty nice and shiny, nice and silver colored. Uh, make sure you clean it off pretty well. There shouldn't be any metal fragments from 600 grit and how light you're sanding, but uh, you never know. Make sure it's nice and clean. So nice and clean, and um, I do need some oil to lubricate this a little bit. All right, so I got a little bit of oil on it. Doesn't need a lot, just a little bit. And you want to put it in, like I said before, if you consider the slope side the front and the flat side the back. I like to have the slope side facing me with the spool valve oriented in this, this orientation and you put it in just like that. So wide side, thinner side already in the spool valve housing and uh, gently push that in there and it's moving very freely. And that's where your stiction issue is, uh, is pretty much from, that spool valve. Uh, so, we've inspected the coils. They look good, so no problem putting them back on. Uh, like I said, slope side is front, kind of like a book. And you want to open up your book like you're reading it. Slip that on there. And now that that's on there, you'll take your bolt. The bolt goes in this orientation. I like to think of the head of the bolt on the side of the thicker uh, side of the spool valve. So push that through. And the nut, of course, get that started. And I will run this down. I'm just holding the nut by hand. And now I can't state this enough, the importance of this on the, the torque of this nut. Uh, I've read uh, on a forum, I don't know if it's true or not, that it's like four inch pounds. Like it's really, really, really light. If you tighten this too much, you'll have a random misfire. And uh, if you're like me, and you did that on all eight injectors, you'll be hunting down random misfires for days before you figure out what you did. So just tighten it snug, but not too snug. And the way I do that is, um, so if you see that, the coil can still move just a little bit. You want to draw it down to where the coil stops moving. And I'm, I'm literally doing this, I'm holding this nut with my fingers and using the tool with my fingers and it's just ever so slightly. And now they are seated and not, not moving. And uh, you can give it a little bit more past that And there you go. Uh, you may be worried about the torque or, or the uh, the nut backing off. I don't think that's really an issue. I've had I did all eight of my injectors this way, and they've been running great, no issue. Uh, you can kind of see how there's the four mil 
portion, and then there's like a, a square, a square on the uh, the nut, and that's to prevent the nut from backing out. So if you uh, tighten it to just past the point where these coils move, I doubt they will uh, back off. And since you have the injector out, it's a good time to check the in, uh, the seal in there. This is where your high pressure oil comes in and this uh, seals it off, uh, seals the oil rail to the uh, injector. Kind of dark, but there's a snap ring, a metal beveled washer, and then the O-ring is beneath that. Uh, from what I understand, these injectors don't really leak. So just a quick visual inspection to make sure nothing's torn should be enough. Um, if you're buying an injector reseal kit, which I highly recommend, I would not recommend reusing the copper washer. Anytime this comes out, it needs a new copper washer. Uh, just because this is a crush washer, and as you know, once it crushes one time, it's uh, pretty much done. If you reuse your washer or you have like an improper torque on your injector hold down, combustion gases will, um, or can, probably will, burn up this copper washer, combustion, gas combustion gases will then travel up to this, well, travel up to this lower O-ring where it will then burn out this O-ring. Combustion gases will pass into your diesel intake ports on the injectors. It could, um, it could push combustion gases and displace diesel, which would then starve your other three injectors on the bank, on that bank. Um, or it could burn this seal, and when you turn the key on and the fuel pump primes, it could just pour diesel down into your com um, combustion cylinder, combustion, into your cylinder, and uh, hydrolock your truck. So, I would highly, highly, highly recommend replacing this every time the injector comes out. The Motorcraft seal kit, which is right here. CM5055, uh, they're literally like $40 for eight. So it's like $5 a pack. So I would definitely recommend a new seal kit anytime this injector comes out. New crush washer, since you have these two um, O-rings in the kit, I replace them anyways, um, even if they're in really good shape, just because I have them. And uh, this O-ring, this blue one, which just seals the plug in the rocker box housing. Not too crucial, but um, you got the O-ring, so why not replace it? So I hope this little breakdown guide tutorial uh, helped you out. Um, I was, I've definitely been doing a lot of research on the six liter injector. I had uh, misfire issues after I had tried to re, uh, well, I tried to sand my swivel valves. So definitely, definitely, definitely pay attention to that torque on that bolt. It's not there to hold the spool valve in, it's just there to hold the coils on there. Uh, you don't want to over torque it and flex those coils because you'll have a misfire that you'll be chasing for days. Um, so yeah, hopefully I helped some of you out there. The six liter truck isn't as bad as they say it is if you maintain it properly and you do your research. Thanks for watching.